Hello everyone, my name is Alessandra Karpova. I'm a machine learning engineer at Subtenji, and today I'm going to tell you about our machine learning projects in the health and pharma industries. We will focus on computer vision as an approach for the diagnosis, diagnosing and detecting objects that is used for applied assays and companies' benefit. I'll guide you through the couple of cases we had recently and which we can open and discuss. As we all know, the number of artificial intelligence and machine learning applications that came out in the last five years in this field is astonishing. There are mobile applications for personal use, digital health solutions, drug discovery solutions, and many others. Today, I present some of our projects whose goal was the automation of processes and their cost reduction by using the power of machine learning. So let's go to the first slide. As I mentioned above, the main topic of solutions we'll see today is automation and optimization with the help of computer vision. Each task is unique, but all of them can be solved by the ML. We made solutions for pathogens detection on petri dishes, disease detection and identification based, based on X-ray and MRI images, and skin disease detection, which can be used by end users, like normal people, but mainly developed for the medical professionals to ease their work. As a bit different on complexity level project is the counterfeit medicine detection. This project is still ongoing, so the details on it will be vague, but I'll try to do my best. We start with the bacteria detection project, as we call it. Uh, the end customers of the solution are pharma companies that use it during the, their assays of pathogens and assays on drugs, which they study for diseases that these pathogens cause. You can see the outcome of the project on the slide and the numbers can say for themselves. So the amount of images that laboratory workers in these companies need to analyze each day is frustrating. So we were tasked with quite a humane objective to free them. And at the same time, with a company orientated goal to minimize errors to the lowest point. The technical part of the project, you, like, which you can see at the bottom of the slide, is as straightforward as it can be. TechStack is Python with its wide range of frameworks, libraries, and its flexibility. We develop convolutional neural network for object detection with an architecture partially based on existing deep CNN. We cleared and structured the data set as the data we got was raw when we first had it and divided classes as our customers saw it. Uh, this project was real fun and it's now fully deployed on customer sites, but we monitor the results for, from time to time. The second project is now going through post-production if we may say so, we call it skin disease detection. And that is exactly what it is. Basically, um, it is an application that can be used by any person who loads it, but it is designed for the doctors to foster diagnosing of various skin conditions from nevus to cancer with rash, eczema, and some others in between. The flow of diagnosing these conditions now varies from hospital to doctors themselves, as you can go to the therapist or dermatologist or other specialist, but we wanted to lose some links in this chain as it is time consuming for patients. At the same time with our solution, any link of this chain may give more feedback then just direct the patient to the next doctor or 
in worst case scenario, which I don't like mentioning, but even falsely comfort the patient. Any false negative mistake result may cost someone's life and you don't have a second chance, which we fully understood when it started the development. The data set for this project is still growing and we plan to expand the number of conditions to examine after live tests and deployment process gives us feedback, we'll be satisfied enough with. TechStack is substantially the same as in this previous project, but the project is obviously different. Uh, the flow of the detection is grounded on the localization of the area of interest on the skin with an ability to consider the whole picture as this area. One of the problems is that when you have skin covered with small objects, which separately can be considered, for example, for example, as acne, but as a total is an indication of rash or eczema, it is more of a poetics to develop, train, and finally polish the network to minimize any kind of false results or not results. Well, let's move on. On the wave of world pandemic, we couldn't leave ourselves behind and not to take our chances to help medical personnel in diagnosing lung lesions faster. We started the development by consolidating the database of various bacteria caused, virus caused, and mechanical lesions, and trying to research the based neural network architecture for the problem. We ended up applying a deep network of architecture designed for the MRI images, and then had to overcome some minor issues connected to the extensive amount of perspectives these images were taken with. Some had one more of one lung on like one lung on the forefront and another just behind it like that. Um, whereas others had like partially only one lung and just some part of another one. Uh, and far from like distance, taken from a distance. Uh, some had only one lung focused or lighted, whereas like at the same time you had two both lungs, but lighted was just one of them. Too many cases. Uh, all of this is really demanding in terms of network training and pre-processing of pictures, images. Uh, the work we did and continue doing now on this project is focused on detecting and classifying as many lung lesion related diseases as possible. However, as more types you add, the more additional programming steps you need to cover them. To detect them, sorry. In terms of pre-processing, segmentation, detection itself, etc not to mention the lack of data available. And at this point, data is our main setback, which we are solving by getting more and more from our potential deployment partners. Uh, from this point of view, we are now on the improving model network stage. Talking about the deployment, the solution is web and cloud-based um, with quite simple and user-friendly front-end uh, being now polished. However, as we speak more to our potential cooperators, uh, they do encourage us to add many more functions which might create this simply diagnostic solution uh, to a platform suitable for doctors and their assistants and, and colleagues uh, for tracking treatment, for example, and other things function things. Well, I would give more details and options we're adding, but um, it's still under construction. So I do have to apologize for such little information at that point. The last one 
uh, I'm going to talk about is the mobile application that is being de developed to identify counterfeit drugs uh, based on their appearance or the look of their packaging. The goal is to arm industry workers and control institutions uh, with on-site tool to detect counterfeit medicines. Um, story short, as can be seen from the slide, the net worth of the black medicine market, uh, which consists mostly of counterfeit uh, medicine, is enormous. We're trying to cope with this problem by developing easy to use, not restricted by internet access solution. Uh, it is created as a set of classification tools to identify whether it is a closed package or blister with pills or just one pill itself. And then looking through the database for similarities. After this preparation, the last algorithm, algorithm network is identifying differences between the model image and the one given by the user. Again, uh, we're still working on this project right now, so I won't give you too many insights about algorithms and other things. I will just add that, as you can see at the bottom of the slide, the tech stack consists of widely used tools combined in the flow that was designed by our architect. So this is all for now. Uh, hope you enjoyed this short webinar. If you have any questions, please email to the address written in the video description if you are watching it on YouTube or just go to the contact information on our website. My colleagues and I will be happy to help you. Thank you for your attention and have a good day.